Hello everybody and welcome back to Fight a Subscriber, where subscribers send me a craft and I pit it against a selection of my own fighters that you can see here. For those of you who haven't seen recent videos and are wondering what's with all the reverb, uh, we're in our new place now and the room in which I'm recording is a little bit echoey. It's kind of a work in progress so uh, please bear with me. But anyway, back to the task at hand. Uh, you have sent me a whole bunch of fighters, thank you very much for that. But uh, I think I am going to have to say that any fighters I receive from now on probably won't make it into this season of Fighter Subscriber. We're just reaching the numbers that are, are going to start to make it unworkable for a single season. So my apologies for that. I'll try and work something out for future seasons, but um, just, just be warned. Anyway, I fired up Google's random number generator, and of the fighters I have received so far, it has kindly selected this for us. So this is our contender for today. This is the Pip Drone by Dylan Norton. First of all, it's a drone, the second drone we've had in this season of Fighter Subscriber, and second, well, it's tiny. It's a single engine craft, it's only 40 parts, which reminds me of my own low part fighter I did in a video a little while ago now, so I'll be very interested to see how this gets on, and I'm sure Dylan will be hoping that, at least in this case, less is more. Before we see it in action, however, let's take a quick look at how it flies. Well, in terms of speed versus manoeuvrability, this is a craft which puts all of its eggs in the speed basket. Um, it's only got those two horizontal control surfaces on the back, so uh, it's an interesting design choice, but it does mean it maintains a lot of speed in the turn. Uh, I think it might do well if the three craft work together, but if the craft get outnumbered at all, especially if it's on a sort of a two-on-one against it, I can't really see it clawing its way back from there, but uh, this is just me guessing. Let's go and see what actually happens. We start then, as is customary, with our challenger, the Pip Drone, going up against my basic craft, my Eurofighter-esque Cyclone. Let's get them into the air. The team's nearly in position then, and the Pip Drones haven't stopped climbing. There we go, the competition starts. Now this may be a deliberate tactic. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens when the missiles start firing because uh, these pip drones don't actually have any AMRAMs. They don't have any radar, which I assume is to keep the craft light and uh, not a successful first volley from the pip drones. Those sidewinders, more of a close range kind of missile, but it looks like the pip drones are going to easily evade that first round of missiles. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens if they manage to get in close and start to launch some of those. So that volley not successful from this pit drone either, but it is closing the distance quite rapidly. There goes a missile. This one has more of a chance. No. Fourth time's the charm, perhaps. There goes another sidewinder. This one looks like it might have more of a shot. Closing in on that cyclone doesn't manage it, and one of the pip drones has been taken out already. I'm assuming that's a missile kill. And that is not good news. Gunfire comes in. Where did that pip drone go? I can't see anything. I can't see the... Oh, there we go. Judging by the wrecked run rate, I'm, I'll assume it crashed into the ground. As I did say earlier, I did think it was going to be very difficult for these craft to get back into it if they go a craft down, if they become outnumbered. I do find that strategy very interesting. Go high, drop down in on them, especially with their speed. If they can, if the pit drones can sort of close the distance and get away a sidewinder very close in, then they might well have a chance of getting some kills. And if, if, if my craft are outnumbered, I think these pit drones could probably do a number on them, but uh, as I said, at the moment it's not looking good for the Pip Drones. The uh, the hope for scenario has has not come to pass. Because of that speed though, they are managing to keep their distance, but I don't think they're going to be able to sort of turn around and engage. At least not in this sort of this 2 versus one and one v one going over, on over there. Oh, that gets very close. The Pip Drone is stripped of some of its parts. What are we missing? We are missing sort of the lateral control surfaces. That makes the craft quite unstable. It goes into a spin. 
loses most of its wings, wing surface. Ah. Then goes into the inevitable spin and it is now pretty much a duck shoot for that cyclone. Which is... Uh, picking up a bit of distance, I'm not sure if that's going to come around and try and uh, finish this drone off. Hmm. So an interesting strategy from the pit drones. I'm not sure it's really worked out this time around. More damage. Just scorches it for the time being. There we go. And the job is done. At here at least. Over here on the other hand, this drone that's still managing to avoid the gunfire. But for how much longer? Still keeping those, uh, keeping those cyclones at arm's length. To, uh, that looked close. So I just switched away and the gunfire looked like it was really giving the, giving the drone a bit of a smattering at least, but uh, doesn't seem to be any damage there. But the craft now has the attention of all three cyclones. It's gained it a bit of distance, but uh, that cyclone is getting very close now. The gun's still pouring in. There we go. The pip drone is disabled, more gunfire comes in, and finishes it off. So the pip drone giving me, giving me a bit of a scare there. I thought it was going to outlast the cyclones in terms of fuel. Uh, it's the, the strategy for this craft didn't pay off this time, but uh, who knows what will happen in the other fights. Um, speaking of which, let's move on. Here we go again then, this time the pip drone's up against my uh, my slightly more manoeuvrable cobtail, so it'll be very interesting to see how this one bears out. Uh, let's get it started. Nearly at the 8km mark then, any second now. Here we go again. So once again, those pip drones will be dropping on their enemies from above. As I said, an interesting tactic. Uh, ooh, that was a little close. I'm not sure if it might be worthwhile sort of setting this craft up a little bit differently, uh, but I, I do sort of take them as they're provided. Um, and maybe setting those, uh, those sidewinders to not launch until they're within a certain distance. I think that one might have launched a little early as well. It did indeed, but dropping in and very close now and still oh oh and that is one of the club tails taken out one of the other pip drones that same tactic i've been discussing so far has seemed to pay dividends for them so here is where it gets very interesting with the pip drones having a numerical advantage yeah this is kind of where i predicted the pip drone strength would lie so I'm, I'm itching to see how this one works out from here. This pit drone, getting a bit of gunfire from one of the club tails, but uh, well, we'll have to see how that one works out as the fight goes on. Both the other club tails in rude health, both chasing the same pit drone. If they can get it down quickly enough, they might be able to level the playing field, but this does leave them wide open for those other drones to come in and... Um, just have a go at them. This one quite a distance away. This one is the one we were discussing. Yeah, it has gotten very interesting all of a sudden. This pip drone coming around, slow in the turn, very slow in the turn, but hopefully, as I said, with what are you doing? You're not really... I think one of the cyclones has broken off and is now engaging this uh, this drone here. So it's all pretty much down on how this uh, this spare drone manages to affect things. Coming in, lining up one of this cocktails. Doesn't manage to get it this time around. So it now sort of becomes an issue of how long can these uh, can these drones hang on for? The two that uh, have the attention of the cocktails, whilst this one comes about and tries to uh, tries to disrupt things as best it can. 
launches its last sidewinder from close range. That is sort of an ideal range. And oh, that's a lot of debris. Is that one of the other club tails? That is one of the other club tails heavily damaged and surely disabled. Trying its hardest to try and maintain it. Gemini Kerman. He'll stick in there to the last, but yeah, this is not looking good for the club tails. Another missile coming in. Ah! Oh, and Jebediah is no more. This last club tail desperately trying to give chase to one of the drones, but uh, now two of these drones, they're quite a distance away. But they do have the capability to close that gap. Is closing the distance on this pip drone here, though, any damage so far? It doesn't look like it. Valentina breaks off the attack for some reason. Valentina decides to switch targets to one of the other pip drones, launches a missile. That will give the other pip drone an opportunity to swing round and get onto her tail, although it's not going to be that difficult to shake them. follows that pip drone as it performs evasive manoeuvres. Coming in low will surely open up with guns any second now. An ideal opportunity there. There go the guns. Oh, that's looking good. Can't quite line up the shot perfectly. Here comes... Here comes gunfire from the other pip drones, though. Not particularly manoeuvrable, but that should make them steady in the shot if they can get it lined up enough. There goes the gunfire. Oh, that was close. That pip drone closing the distance. Valentina needs to act now to shake it off. Otherwise, it's it's not going to be good news. Valentina lines up that shot. Still not firing. I do have infinite ammo on, so that should not be a problem. But it seems to be very reluctant to fire. Now the gunfire comes in. Valentina gets scorched. More gunfire. Some definite damage, doesn't appear to be anything major. Some more comes in, oh, loses control surfaces. Loses part of the wing surface. Surely it's only a matter of time now. Valentina Kerman tries to come about, it's not going to be as easy to control now. Pulling evasive manoeuvres, more gunfire, more wing surface lost. Starts to flip out. Manages to get it under control. Okay, this has been going on a while now. Valentina Kerman's craft has not really offered anything up by way of um, by way of damage to the pip drones. It hasn't looked in any danger of doing so. So, I think I'm going to call this one for the pip drones, and we will uh, we will move on. Okay, so with one fight apiece, we head into our final round, where the pip drones are going to go up against my flying wing esque. Panthers. Let's uh, let's get this last one started. Once again, our two teams nearly in position. Here we go then. So the uh, the strategy of these craft has worked once and failed once. How will things turn out here? Once again, firing two missiles very early. Neither of which have. Uh, managed to do anything. I think it almost helps if sort of these craft get an early missile on them, because then they sort of forget about launching their own missiles and break off and try and evade, but it does mean they sort of save their missiles until they're in, in close, which might be a beneficial thing. And that is one of the Panthers falling to an early missile kill again, and that is another one gone. I was really, really worried about these craft when I was first testing them, but that is that is the last panther gone. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Hmm. <laughs> I 
Okay. So as Richmond Kerman crashes into the ground, that is a very quick victory for the pit drones, and that strategy has worked to absolute perfection. I was I <laughs> when I was originally testing this craft, as I was saying, I would would not have said that was going to be the result. I really would not have said that this was going to be clean sweeping two rounds of this this competition. But uh, uh, anyway, let's let's close this one out. So it's two victories to one for the Pip Drones, and uh, with six kills and six survivors over the three fights, that gives them a points total of 12, which puts them top of the leaderboard, and I don't mind admitting I got this craft very, very wrong indeed. It's interesting because I think this is the first craft I've received where there was a, a sort of definite strategy involved, which I think perhaps could have been tweaked a little bit to make it more effective, but yeah, it certainly worked to great effect here. So anyway, that was the Pip Drone. Uh, thank you very much to Dylan Norton for sending that in. Uh, if you'd like me to fight any of your own craft, then feel free to send them to me, although I can't guarantee that they'll make it into this season. Uh, a list of uh, the details and the rules for this season are in the description. I can't imagine they'll change too much in the future. Um, but uh, for now, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.